Yeah, what's going on? Figured I'd uh, do this the old school way since I got about an hour left on live. <clears throat> but this is more or less a follow up to the Malcolm X documentary, which, as you know, was incomplete, of course, for obvious reasons. And the obvious reasons are the fact that it's a Freemason outfit. And I give Sir Ra Sutton Seti the credit for exposing uh, the Nation of Islam, uh, the Moors, and a few other groups as Freemason outfits. You know? It was staring everybody in the face. Everybody already knew. But only until people see with their own eyes that that's what it is. Do people accept it? That's why on this one, I'm putting the picture of Farrakhan in full Freemason regalia. Now, of course, you have the defenders of the nation of Islam. No matter how much they veer away from and go against, totally against Elijah Muhammad. Because I said before, Farrakhan is a puppet. Puppet of who? Puppet of the white man via Freemasonry. Then you have cooned out individuals who will make excuses. And maybe I got to call them out by name. I'll say it, the radical sister. <laughs> I'm saying it. And I'll say Maurice Mohammed. And I'm not saying it just to say it or to start trouble. I'm saying it because this is what happened. They started defending them regardless. And then we start wondering, well, why do these people defend these people no matter what, even when they're wrong? Because they're, they're brothers in the craft under the white man, I might add. I have to keep stressing that out because that's what the nation of Islam always talked about, the white man this, the white man that. But yet they... I proven myself that they were pro-white and anti-black. That's what I proven. I knew that years ago because obviously what they want is separation. That's what the white man wants. Marcus Garvey wanted separation. That's what they wanted. They all take orders from the white man. But like that guy said during the Black Panther uh, article I wrote. They need the black people to go in or a black face. Like Maurice Muhammad said, somebody who looks similar to go in and lead you off the cliff. And that's been the problem. That's why I don't really get into kooky, spooky, mystical, magical fringe groups. Now, like I said before, Freemasonry, I guess you could say they teach you some real world knowledge, but the problem is, at what point do you start thinking for yourself, if you can, and thinking, okay, well, this is actual knowledge versus philosophy versus brainwashing. That's the point people have to decide. But whenever it comes to religions, fringe groups, cults, usually, and not usually, all the time, somebody's leading you down a path that they want you to be led to. The last thing they want for you to do is to think for yourself. Now, the Freemason uh, mantra is that right now is they're trying to get rid of, get people to think away from religion. Even though religious philosophy is what forged empires. And like the nation of Islam, you know, if the religion didn't work, uh, beat some people up, kill them. And still that fair to me. That's the main thing that people need to arrest, the fear. 
See, once uh, that's why I made the, the episodes about the fear before. Once I, once you get rid of the fear, then that's when you think for yourself. That's when you could do what you want to do. And that means the fear of getting your ass beat, the fear of getting killed. See, because as long as somebody else has the advantage, and that, that advantage is you're scared. They, they're like, okay, I, we, we got these people. We can control these people. Once that uh, advantage is gone, then they get nervous. Then they get concerned. It's like if somebody has to shaking some business down, hey, pay us this amount every week. Long as they pay, they know they got the people shook. But when they say that money's not coming through, then they start getting concerned. Like, uh oh, are they not making enough money? Or are they telling us to go fuck ourselves? Now, if somebody's telling you to go fuck yourself, then they feel that they have to respond in order to instill or reinforce the fear into other people who are paying. But the other people don't realize all you got to do is take out a few of these guys and shit, that's the end of it. (laughs) Now, of course, somebody else might try to come out, but that's going to be fewer and fewer as time goes on because people are going to realize that's not a good move. So, (laughs) uh, Cause I know I get a business. I ain't paying nobody a goddamn thing. There ain't no doubt about that. Cause there ain't no fear. I'd be damn if I'm working to pay some clown off. And the only thing he has to offer is the prospect of pain or death. Well, that's a prospect that can go on to you too. Once people understand that, then you can arrest yourself from these, uh, fringe groups, these kooky groups. But of course, like I said before, mentally ill uh, individuals are usually the first recruits and they stick with things. But anyway, let me get to the part of the main point, even though that's a part of it. Being the fact that Nation of Islam affiliates defend Elijah Muhammad. Some of these people say things such as Malcolm X should not have gone against his teacher. Then these things wouldn't happen. In other words, they're saying, if you talk shit, you deserve to die. But in the same breath, they're lying, of course. They'll say, no, I don't mean that the man should, should have been killed. But you just said the man shouldn't have gone against his teacher. And the end result was he died. Now, I'm talking about the radical sister and her king. And this mirrors everyone else's uh, sentiments too. former nation of Islam affiliates. And it's also mirrors the other nation of Islams that are out there, because, like I said before, there are two things that they the other nation of Islams. uh, Three things, rather, that the other nation of Islams always adhere to one. They all believe that they're the main ones following Elijah. Two, they hate Malcolm X because if you say, well, I love Malcolm X, then you're claim, then some people look at that as, uh, well, you hate Elijah because Malcolm X went against Elijah, which he did not, of course. <clears throat> um, and the third is they hate Farrakhan. Now, of course, the third one, that's the best part about the other nation of Islams. Uh, <laughs> But again, that's why they don't get the shine that they should get is because Farrakhan is an agent. And of course, he's a Freemason. Now, I was looking, listen to the video. People were asking some pretty good questions. And they were avoiding the Freemason question for a while. And then her king addressed it first you know how people they do with elijah they they before they used to deny that he was a mason and then once wesley muhammad admitted it people had no choice but to accept it but then after a while but some of them still play stupid because i guess they didn't get the word but the same thing with farrakhan they didn't get the word 
Others pointed this out long ago, but see, you need the smoking gun in order to show you this. And then some people are like, okay, and then, then what's the excuse? The fallback excuse is, oh man, Masons ain't got no power. <laughs> Especially black Masons. Well, why are you joining then? No, oh, it's good. It's about brotherhood and all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How come you can't join something else? Isn't the church, wasn't the nation of Islam supposed to be about brotherhood? And if they don't have any power, why are they joining? If Louis Farrakhan is a leader of a nation of Islam, why is he belong to another group that supersedes that? Because that's what that does. Freemasonry supersedes the nation of Islam and whatever beliefs they're supposed to have. Because in the nation of Islam, so-called Allah is supposed to be the one on top. But why are you joining Freemasonry? Same thing for church guys. Orthodox Islamic guys. Now we know the small hats, anybody with half a brain knows that the small hats run Freemasonry. And as I explained before, under videos that people never really watched, all Freemasonry is, is designed to control people, it, to give them support of the Jew world order. That's all it's about. That's why money, fame, privilege, goes with Freemasonry. You get preferential treatment with Freemasonry. People wouldn't give a damn if they weren't looking for a leg up. Any group, people want to know, what can the group do for me? That's what they want to know. That's why the worst groups don't really offer anything but a belief in God. You keep believing in God, he'll get you through. Then you got these Freemason uh, outfits who want you to take you away from God and take you away from religion, even though Freemasonry is a religion. So that's the thing. Basically what they want is they, they want you to get away from those religions and get with this one. But the other religions you can get into by just being a believer and reading things and becoming disciplined, but you still got to move up. Freemasonry is a little different, but at the same time, it's similar because it's like your workplace. Come on the job entry level. You got to prove things, prove that you could do this, that, the other. Most importantly, you must earn trust. Once you earn trust, then you move up. You move up in pay. You move up in privilege. And the higher up you uh, move, then all of a sudden people follow you. And you start directing people. But you can't direct people the way you want to direct them. You got to direct them the way they say direct them. You start doing something different, you're out of here. But this Freemasonry stuff, this is the thing that binds all these people together. This is why you got mayors. You see countless black mayors. The only exception I can give is uh, Miriam Berry, the late Miriam Berry. All others, no matter how educated they are, far beyond the average education of urban areas that they uh, become mayors of. And they only become mayor First of all, they're placed into office and they usually put them in urban settings to make it look like black people voted for these people. And then when they get in the office, they shit on black people over and over and over and over again. And black people, usually other Freemasons that are on TV, always play the same old back and forth game. These leaders ain't doing nothing, blah, blah, blah. Get with me. 
what is this all about? It's all about one group trying to take over the world. And what they need is to control and neutralize all opposition globally. How do they do this? <clears throat> they create groups that go by different feelings, different ideologies, different temperaments of different peoples. Start them up, round them up, and neutralize them. Just like the Nation of Islam. They rounded people up to neutralize them. Malcolm wanted to go to war. Elijah Muhammad said, nah. But when it's time to go to war with black people, Elijah Muhammad says, yeah. <laughs> That's the way it is. Hands off the white man. Hands on the black man. This is why the Nation of Islam, Nation of Gods and Earths and other ideologies, including the church. They like getting people from prison. Not because they're trying to reform these people because they're trying to control the uncontrollable. Because when you get people from prison, what do you what does that mean? That means you are dealing with people who either are crazy enough, brave enough, or who don't give a fuck enough to go out, rob, steal, kill, assault. Those are known as warriors or soldiers, just guided in the wrong direction or or they're working for themselves. And like I said, when it comes to corruption, organized crime, the people who don't go to jail, aside from people who are into uh, Freemasonry, because organized crime is a part of that, they are successful because they spread the money. But when you are doing it and you're corrupt for yourself or your little crew, people, nah, they got to stop that because now you're, you're doing too much. You got to spread that shit around. But people in prison, when you're trying to build an army or when you're trying to build up or take away those who are brave enough to want to go to war because they've already been there, you take them away from one group, put them to this mystical group. And then when it's time to bust heads, mainly of black people, of course. Now you got people who've already been there and done that. So it's no problem. See, when you got people who claim to be righteous or who haven't even had a fight, you round them up in a group. Now you say, listen, man, we, we got to teach this man a lesson. Go over there and whip his ass. Then you got a bunch of scared people saying, man, why we got to do that? You know, you know, all that kind of shit. So they don't know nothing about that. But see, that's why you grab guys out of prison. Direct them to you. Now they're like, OK, damn, I can still do what I'm prone to do. Which is to slap people up, act out of, out of control and even kill people. Rob, because that's a trade. <laughs> Robin, you know, they're like, damn, we could do this. But under the guidance of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad or anybody else. So, again, that's how you do that. You, you got one group, Nation of Islam, they control one segment. Moors, they control another segment. Five percenters control another segment, different thinking. Church control what's left over. Then you still got people even outside of these groups, even Islam. Then you got the Israelites. Another situation. I know they'll say no, but I've been analyzing them. They're the toughest one to figure out, but I think I figured it out. I think I already said that in, in videos in the past. Because I always look for the look at the ideology and then I ask myself, where is the weak link at? What is the, the, the link that you can go to and say, OK, this one, we pull this pin out. 
the whole shit unravels. I'm not going to say that here. If you've seen it, my other videos and you'll know what that is. But I kind of like the order of the Israelites. But see, the Israelites attracts people because, you know, they supply people with women. That's, that's something that attracts. Well, 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 man doesn't want multiple wives. <laughs> Especially if you belong to belong to a group that uh, practices that. And the women are ready and willing. Shit, who the hell doesn't want to do that? So, <laughs> you know, that's what you have in that situation. And the Israelites works because a lot of black people are Christians. So you could pull the people from Christianity uh, that the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses can't pull. And people who are still on the uh, fence are not really believing, but going to church because of one reason or the other. And those people come from prison, prison systems, too. You pull them into another belief. In other words, it, the, try and make it simple. It's the white man spreading his money around controlling all these groups because he has limitless funds so he can control all these groups like i said before you can't tell me that these um israelites are not getting the stipend to go out there and stand because we know damn well black people just don't want to do it we know that i mean you ask black people hey man go come to this rally uh we're we trying to shut this store down or come to this meeting brother Meeting about what? You know, when people start asking questions about what? You know, they, they're really trying to find ways not to come. <laughs> that's, that's what it's all about. But for money, because I, like I said, I've been in politics, been a campaign manager, been in the politics, seen it all. They pay people off. When people talk about paying black people off with a biscuit chicken dinner, that's literal fact because that's all it takes for black people to just show up for a political campaign. I'm telling you black people, they'll pay people at the polls. That's what they do. They pay people to pick people up, whatever it takes. So those who have the money, they can afford to pull these stunts. And what it's doing is pulling people apart. That's why when black people get money, black people aren't spreading their money like the white man is because they're too busy trying to be big. And too many of them are Freemasons any goddamn way. So that's the direction they're going in. You know, it's like this Kobe Bryant celebration. I find it intriguing how they keep spreading that out after... You know, I ain't going to say he was forgotten about, but, you know, it was basically forgotten about in the news, in the media. Now, all of a sudden, they want to rev it up again to make you not forget about him. Kind of like Kaepernick, another Freemason BS. They never, ever let you forget about the man. There's always a story to bring him up again. And like I said before. The man stayed paid. See, these are the clues you got to look out for when you see these stunts. You got to ask yourself, OK, well, how's this person getting paid? We saw it with Malcolm X. Malcolm X wasn't getting paid. I don't know if he wanted to get paid or not or didn't want to ask. <laughs> or maybe he just wanted enough to live and survive. Maybe they offer him the uh, the pail, a whole lot of money. But maybe he, he thought, okay, I don't want to get wrapped up in this because then I'm going to be dependent on the money. Just like a lot of these guys. I'm, I'm not going to lie either. Uh, you know how, how it is. I got to tell like it is. Even with Eric Muhammad, he had other members. Yeah, he talked bad to people, but the only man that stays is the one that's getting paid, which he's shouldn't have told the other members that this guy was getting paid because obviously others are going to start saying, well, why is he getting paid? How come I'm not getting paid? 
because I know that's what's going to be on my mind. What makes him so special that he should get paid and I don't get paid? Then I'm going to want something. But when you say that, now we know why that man sticks around. So you need people who stick around because they're down with the cause. But the cause has to grow. Then naturally, when money comes in, you pay the people. Because they got to dedicate their lives for it. So that means you can't have them going out working jobs. Because now they're working for somebody else. And they're torn between the group and getting paid. But see, the white man comes in with his bank and his limitless finances. He can keep paying coons and Uncle Toms. People, of course, that they're down with Freemasonry because you have to have people under the same umbrella, the same ideology. You just can't go around paying any old guy and say, hey, man, do this, do that and the other. People do that when they're lazy and somebody pay them. And they're like, I don't really feel like doing this shit. Let me grab this guy and have him do it. This is what they do. This is why they appoint people as presidents, mayors, CEOs, all that kind of stuff. It's because they need everybody on the same page. Because everybody has to be serving them. If you're not on the same page, you can get lost or you can get killed. That's what it's all about. Malcolm X wasn't on the same page, but obviously they had to take care of Malcolm X for other reasons. But you have these other members. They say that Malcolm X should have listened to Elijah Muhammad. Shouldn't have gone against them. But as I always make sure I note, I note is that Farrakhan is going against Elijah Muhammad. He didn't say, fuck Elijah Muhammad, but he did say Scientology is where it's at. Which is basically saying, fuck Elijah Muhammad. He said, the white woman is where it's at. He said, follow these white men. The devil. Nation of Islam, people and affiliates, they've been silent on that. They make excuses. That matter of fact, they don't make excuses. They lie for Farrakhan. <laughs> and you combine that with the white media never mentioning it. When he made that speech in July 2012, I said, Dan, this is a turning point right here. This is unbelievable what I'm hearing. But given the fact that he's a coon agent from the beginning, it's not surprising because you round them up. Now you turn them around for the white man. Now you're making them love the white man. This is why these are coons. You got to call them out. This is why the nation of Islam has been given a free reign to beat down black people and kill people in order to get them in line by using fear. And the white man let them do it because the white man needed these people to round their people up. And of course, the Caribbean connection with Pan-Africanism and Freemasonry. That's why you got to look at people's origins. That's why I say stay away from other blacks. Caribbean blacks and others. It's not about hate. It's about people's origins. And. Um, and cultures. Because they have different affiliations. I told you when you keep seeing. Foreign blacks in this country. Rising into high places. But not us. You gotta ask yourself why. What is it that they don't like about us or what is it that they fear about us that they don't fear about the Caribbean or the African? That's what you have to ask yourself uh, questions. This is why I say separate ourselves from them. Don't don't you don't have to hate, but just don't associate and definitely don't give secrets. Even though we got too many people with big mouths out here. 
you got to ask people's uh, backgrounds. If you don't know their backgrounds, you can get an idea by their phenotype, which a lot of people, unfortunately, yeah, a lot of people know, a lot of people don't know. Phenotype, uh, cultures, and even with their names. Now, the people with the English names, those are a little harder to uh, tell for some people. But a lot of times the first names will give it away. So this is what com what binds all these people. And it's all doing the work of the bankers, the small hat bankers. I'm sure they might tell them something else like, oh, this is for brotherhood, world unity. Uh, coming together. Well, if, if that's the case, then how, how come they still oppressing the black man then? Oh, I see, because a lot of the Freemasons, Master Masons, black ones are Caribbean. Just like Prince Hall himself. Caribbean. Told you there's a correlation between all this shit. I'm telling you. That's why Freemason blacks, they feel powerful because they know the white man has my back. It's like one of those mob uh, front guys, stooges, who has the business front for the mob. He feels powerful because he's like, the mob got my back until they don't, you know? So... Again, this is all about these different groups are all about rounding up different mindsets of black people. You, you, you round them all up. All to take them away from the black cause. But even though they'll stress and talk about a black cause. This is why you look at the linchpin of the groups. Then you look at where these groups are ultimate goals are and then when you find out the bottom line the bottom line leads to nowhere with the Christians you give up money you give up your lives sorry I just heard something I'm in the car. What the fuck was that? <laughs> but you give up your lives. And then in the end, what happens? Wait for Jesus. The Israelites. The white man is the devil that the Bible speaks of. We need 144,000. For what? Because at the end of the day, what is their end goal? Wait for Jesus to come back to destroy the white man. I mean, God damn. Then wait for a while. Jesus created the white man, right? Nation of Islam, what's their goal? No, nothing. At the end of the day, they want total separation. That's what they claim. None of them even attempted to separate, just like Marcus Garvey. Same type of situation, coming from the same camps. They want separation from the white man. But it's the leadership rounding us up, trying to get us to do that. But they never did that themselves. And they're not doing that. Fair con and them, they have enough money to go out and do what D.R. York did, at least. You know, at least do that. And they're not doing that. So they want to ask the white man to give them land to get away from him. Even though the white man is oppressing you and doesn't want you to have anything. So why is he going to give you any goddamn land? Doesn't make any goddamn sense. Man, is it hot in there? What the fuck? But, um,. I guess it is. It seems cold, but <clears throat> anyway, doesn't make any goddamn sense. 
the uh, Moors. What's their goal? The find the land of Moo? <laughs> uh, because they're not Muslims. I know I'm uh, going to offend some people, but you know I'm not with that stuff. They're not Muslims, even though they shout Islam. Then some claim to be Native American or Aboriginal. But yet, they claim to uh, be down with the Moors of uh, Africa. But they're not African. But it's all Freemasonry. Mystical, magical stuff that goes nowhere. The only people getting flim flam with all these uh, f fringe groups are black Americans. That's the goal. Islam, Orthodox Islam. What does that do? That takes you away from being who you are. Now you take on a different name, a different uh, wardrobe, and you're trying to be like somebody else. People who you don't even know who those people are. You think you know who they are. You say that they're Arabs. And then some of you say, oh, Arabs are black, which the original ones are, and they are. But you don't even know who these people are in these so-called Arab countries today running the show. And none of you will even admit to who they are. But you'll call them Arabs. Why? Because the white Freemason told them the Ottoman Turks be Arabs, keep the land. That's why. And the rest of you coon free Freemasons fall in line. And that includes master teachers, as they call them. Henry Clark. Yeah, him too. Doctor, so-called Dr. Ben and the rest of them. I got to call them up because it is what it is. So you got to put it out there. To let you know what you're dealing with. And then you know why you keep going backwards and going around in a circle. Circle seven. <laughs> you're going around in a circle, going nowhere. While at the same time, the white man continues to rule and continues to excel. Asians are right after him. Everybody else, Indians are right after them. And they're not following none of this bullshit. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the key thing you got to understand. They're not following none of this bullshit. And look where they're at. It's all designed to take you away. See, I, I got to let you know, I can't be brainwashed. Why? Because people don't know my background. I've studied all this shit. I never even once considered joining any of these groups. Why? Because I, like I said, I look for the linchpin and then I look for the end goal, the end game. And it's usually nothing. It's always go nowhere, do nothing. And then I look at other groups. The linchpin, shit, it's their culture. Their culture. The end goal is what? Running things. That's what the fuck the end goal is. And you see that in motion. With us, it's mystical, magical bullshit that makes you become a bitch, a punk, and say, okay, I'm not doing nothing. I'll I, I leave it in the hand of God. And I, I just hope and pray that God destroys the white man. Well, back in the Moorish times, and I'm talking the real ones, they, yeah, they may have prayed to Allah. <laughs> they may have discussed them and all that kind of shit. But at the end of the day, they developed weapons and military strategy and they knew they had to go and get busy. And may Allah be with them when they're getting busy. But as we know, there was a point in time 
when Allah was not with them. <laughs> they lost it all. So I guess Jesus must have been with the white man, right? The mutant albino. Because they eventually took it all. And unlike other people, they have all these kooky fringe groups. This metaphysics bullshit with the Bobby Hemmets. You know, all that bullshit. Metaphysics is true in the computing world. <laughs> but so far, it hasn't proven to be true among li living things. At least not in the way that these people are talking. Bobby Hemmett deals with this magic bullshit. Where's the magic to heal his health conditions? Huh? But it really shocks and amazes me how many black people fall for all this bullshit. You know, uh, the older I keep getting, <laughs> as we all are getting older, every day, I keep saying to myself, maybe this is part of the problem too. I mean, if the shit is working and the white man, all he has to do is keep spreading his money around because it's unlimited money. You pick a few coons, have them guide and direct. You sit back and still do what you do. And you know, it's all a game. They know it's all a game. You know that they're doing what you tell them to do. And they do it because they want what you got. <laughs> and their ego. I mean, you can't dismiss ego. Because people want recognition. People want to say, I'm the king. In school, if you have a contest, spelling bee, whatever it is, essay test. Anybody enters. You want to be the winner. And if you can't be the winner, you at least want to be one of the names called on the stage. And if you're not, you feel like, God damn, I mean, well, well, what am I? <laughs> you know, but when you get your name called on the stage, then you're like, OK, I'm doing the right thing. You know, this is why the Farrakhan's, the, the, these egomaniacs, these Sharptons. This is why part of the reason they do what they do, because they like being the ones being called on. That's why people call on them. Oh, man, I got a problem. Call the NAACP. Call Sharpton. Call Farrakhan. Why? They don't do got a goddamn thing. The only thing they do is bring the media. And the only reason the media comes is because they are Freemasons. That's why. Johnny, Johnny, uh, hey, what's that guy? Uh, I think he's on a Houston news at Darrell X or whatever the hell he is. I got that on that news channel in some state. I think it's in Texas, Houston. He, the Nation of Islam guy, why does he have a show? I keep telling people. These people claim that the white man is the devil. Why is the devil employing them? Why is the devil giving their uh, cult legitimacy? Why does the devil keep recognizing Farrakhan? Why did the, why does Farrakhan get cut out of a Malcolm X documentary? When you can't tell the story of Malcolm X getting double crossed without talking about Farrakhan. Why does Farrakhan get taken out of the Malcolm X movie? Hopefully Spike Lee filmed a whole lot of scenes. <laughs> At least I hope. With Farrakhan in it, alternate version. So once the man is gone, he could release that cut. But of course, we know Spike Lee is down with that shit too. <laughs> All these awards he's been getting lately and his uh, purple outfits. We know what the deal is, Spike Lee. 
That's why he's been getting recognition from the white man. Even though he's still, he, I consider him one of the better directors out there, one of the greats, with his own unique style. <clears throat> but they used to hate Spike Lee, probably to get garner interest in black people. But then they loved him. They loved his do the right thing. You know, they, they, I don't think they loved it when it was out. But after that, they started uh, praising it as an all-time classic. And of course, that subject matter happened to have been race. But they don't praise his Malcolm X, though. <laughs> when I think that's his best movie. I don't know if it's because I like the subject matter or what. Do the right thing is good, but, you know, that can be kind of boring after a while. But the Malcolm X, I'm sure everybody listening will agree. You can watch that one over and over again, like I have been. But it would have been better if Farrakhan would have been in it. I mean, they had to come, uh, his mother, another motherfucker, they walk far away from the car, get to the damn elevator, and then they want to keep on. I'm sure you heard that. Beep, 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 beep. That's why when I'm in rich towns, I don't give a damn about I'm around Bentleys, Rolls Royces. I get out the car, I'm hitting it and beeping. I know they're, they're probably like, huh. we ain't thinking about that. But I do it any goddamn way. <laughs> Believe it or not, your car can get stolen no matter where the fuck you at. To be honest with you. Or damaged. But um, Farrakhan is protected. I knew it then. I know it now. Definitely now. Now you're going to know it now. I also wonder why Malcolm's sister Ella and his brothers don't make the cut. Because that doesn't tell the full story. That's why it's the good thing, no matter what people said about his autobiography. Since we don't have any other versions, that's what we got to go by. And I'm sure that now the motherfucker's coming back to the car. <laughs> uh, what did I miss that this nigger might take? <laughs> but, um... The, the autobiography, I'm sure those sessions were um, audio recorded because nobody's going to just interview a guy and take some goddamn notes in order to write a book. You know, record that shit. So you can go over that shit over and over again to make sure you got that shit right. Where's the audio at? That's what I like to know. It has to be someplace, you know, but if it weren't for that book, we wouldn't have known the fine details about Malcolm X's life. Now, I keep forgetting Shorty. I forgot his real name, but he has a uh, book. I got to get a hold of that. Maybe, you know, you got to read all books to read their perspective, too. You know, some people are going to embellish some shit to make themselves look good, but then you got to figure out what's real and what's not. But, yeah, I got to get a hold of that book. Glad I brought that up. Hopefully it's not too much money. But um, I like to hear from his perspective. Because everybody, even everybody who's involved in the same thing, if everybody's involved in a bank robbery, you know, the media can tell it from one way, the FBI can tell it from another way. All you hear is the FBI's perspective. It's a whole bunch of criminals came in, did this, that, and the other. And we got them. You hear it from the victim's side. I was frightened to death. I thought I was going to die, blah, 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 so on and so forth. The bank manager's side. Oh, this is common procedure. Give them the money, what little we can give them. And hopefully they get the fuck out. And you know, I'm putting this very short, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> um... Each bank robber side is my job was to do this, that and the other. While this guy did that, that guy did this. My job was the time. 
and keep the people at bay. My job was to go collect and hurry up and get us the fuck out of there. My job was to drive. Then each guy feels a different way. That's why you get different books on, on the matter. So you can see the, hear the different perspectives. But every time they tell uh, Malcolm X's story, they leave out Farrakhan and they leave out his sister Ella and his brothers. And you're distorting the story when you do that. That's what you're doing. Why? That's the question. Like the character of Baines, like I said all the time. In the movie. That's what they call a composite character. Now they have those for different reasons. Either budget concerns. You just throw a whole bunch of different characters in the one. That way you don't have to pay different actors, you know? Uh, you, you do it for another reason, story reasons. Because if you keep throwing in different characters just to say, okay, this was Malcolm's sister, Ella, now you got to explain her. And then you're going to have to show her again. And talk about her again, sometime during the movie, even if it's only one other time. So they cut him out, cut her out. Like the girl he was seeing early on in the movie. Dancing with and met her. Even during that time, you notice how they didn't show his sister. When he was running in Boston. But even during that time. With that lady. And I think in the autobiography, that, that was a real lady too. But they did mention her later on in the movie being a hooker. The only difference was in the autobiography, if I recall correctly, he says that he never knew what happened to her, except that she didn't seem to be on the right track. But Spike Lee made it seem like she was hooking in the streets of uh, Harlem, even though when he met her, she was in Boston. But the point is, he introduced that lady in the movie and she was with Malcolm for a while. So he had to touch on her later on in the movie. That's what they have to do when they introduce a character. You kind of have to, not all the time, but you kind of have to explain them and explain why they're not around anymore. Some characters can have one critical line that explains everything or a scene or something that happened in somebody's life. And then you don't need them anymore. You could do it like that. You know, but then there are others that you kind of want to stay away from because then you, if, if you introduce too many others, then it's like, okay, this is all over the place. Like we know anybody's life, you know, you, you're going to be dealing with a whole bunch of different people, not just a small crew of people that they know. And then everybody out here that's listening, I'm sure we all, have been through a, a portion of our lives where we knew a set of people at a certain age, little kids into teens. <clears throat> and some of those people that we knew may have gone their separate ways for whatever reason, moving away or what have you. Then into the teens up until I guess 19 or something like that. Then you start running with a different group. You might switch up for whatever reasons, criminality, you know, people get into different things. Females get pregnant, all that kind of shit. You know, you get different people at different times, you know? So you can't cover them all. So that's what that Baines character represented. A whole bunch of guys, the James Shabazz, that's why they had them resemble him. The James Shabazz, the Farrakhan's, his brothers, and a few others. You know? That's what that Baines character represented. And Elijah Muhammad's sons, I noticed in the documentary, they talked about uh, Elijah Muhammad Jr., but then they leave W. Dean Muhammad, w. D. Muhammad out. Why? Because he was down with that shit, too. So he had to look good, even though 
everybody says that he was the one that, and hey, Malcolm said it himself. Now, Wallace was the one whispering in his ear about all that shit. And I told you that, are they real or are they agents, Malcolm X, that it was uh, Wallace that kept on whispering in Malcolm's ear over time. Because at first, Malcolm was like, I'm not with this shit. I, I don't even want to hear nothing about this bullshit. I ain't asked to hear about this. Then they, then he kept, he keep on pressing, you know, he keeps on pressing. It's like when I tell you that story about that girl when I was on the job, I told you that, I think I told you that in that video. I'm up here thinking about what I'm going to do when I get off the job. And this white Italian girl, this bitch who I caught, <laughs> you may, this might sound funny to you. And I still got the shit. I'm a cut. I've been trying to cut that shit for a while. I had recorded a Jerry Springer episode. She was in the audience. She gained a whole lot of weight, but I never forget that face because that was the face that helped get me removed from my job. I still had that shit on my computer. I'm going to cut that shit one day. And I never forget her name either. Her name was Amanda. I did forget her last name, but I knew she was Italian. And you can see she had black characteristics too, but she obviously hated black people. Up here thinking about what I'm going to be doing after I get off. And she comes up to me talking some sex talk. Not, do you want to do this to me in that talk? She's just talking some sexual talk. Football was on too. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm I'm really not re really hearing what she's talking about. <laughs> Truth be told, because I'm thinking about what I'm thinking about. I heard her, but I wasn't paying attention. And she saw that, so then she comes back and she tries to say some uh, more shit to get my attention. Not hearing her again. And then she comes back again. And I'm like, why is this bitch pestering me? Why is she trying to get my attention with this bullshit conversation? Then I said a little something, which wasn't explicit. I just said some bullshit just to respond. You know, I, I, it wasn't nothing I was really even concerned with, truth be told. But next thing I knew... I get called into the office. Not that day, but a few days later. Yeah, we've been hearing you uh, been talking about some. Uh, we got a sexual harassment uh, complaint. I said sexual harassment. I said, man, what the fuck is going on? I ain't sexually harass people. I don't even talk to people on the job like that. That's, and then I was thinking, I was like, oh, I know who it is. I said, man, that bitch came up to me with that bullshit. I, was, I wasn't even concerned with what the hell she was saying. But then they let the shit stick and put it on my record. That's why I never forgot that bitch's face. And that's why when I, when I was going over the uh, video, I said, hold up. I said, don't tell me that's her. That's her. That fucking bitch. I mean, that job wasn't a life-changing job, but, you know, me, I, I, I just... I don't like being having things pinned on me that I didn't do. That's just me. Just like when I'm going through that shit with that, those coons, you know, I don't like it, the shit. If I didn't do this shit, don't put the shit on me. You know, you own up to your own shit. So that's why I didn't like that shit. That's why I'm glad the bitch blew up like a balloon. <laughs> I said, damn, see, if you want to say God uh, or Car karma comes back, you see, <laughs> which I don't believe karma is a magical thing. That's just, you want to say it's God controlled, so be it. I, you know, I don't believe in it the way the humans describe it, but God damn it. Shit. It's happened before, though. But I'm glad that bitch blew up. And I ended up looking even better. <laughs> <laughs>
But um, let's see what the time is on this. Damn, over an hour. Only feels like half hour for me. But um, yeah, man, this is what it's all about, man. Rounding people up, entrapping people, putting people in a position for failure. This is also known as propaganda as well. See, they judge people. That's why they have meetings, meetings at these groups. And they have a meetings attendance list. Even gangs do that, too. And matter of fact, gangs, that's another. I'm glad I just mentioned that's another subset. Why do you think they call (laughs) different uh, groups affiliated with gangs sets? Because that's a subset. Now, who the hell gave them that terminology? That's a subset of what I'm talking about. These 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 groups. This is gangs keep attendance records because you want to see who's down. You want to see how seriously somebody's taking the shit. Of course, there are agents in there as well for different reasons. You know, some want to monitor and make sure things are going well. Uh, Others want to bring people down when they fall out of favor. And of course, they want to monitor and make sure people are making the money they're supposed to be making and giving up what they're supposed to be giving up. But this is what it's all about, man. It's taking different states of mind, different interests, seeing who gets physically active in these things. Because what will be left with all these different ideologies is going to be the lazy, the totally scared straight, the ones who are so scared that they're like, man, I ain't trying to do nothing. (laughs) You know, then you got the lazy who's like, Yeah, shit, man. Let somebody else do that. Those are the ones that get left behind. Those are the useless ones. I'm just being real. And then, of course, you got people who can't do anything, even if they wanted to. People in a wheelchair, people too old, people too young. Or too poor. Or even too stupid. And I'm just being real. This is how it works. This is why I say... If we are the progress, we got to leave these fringe groups alone. That's number one. People say, like when Muhammad was on, he said something to the effect that as long as our goal is the same, then we all can work together. But see, my research shows that that's not the case. Just like you have in you or you had in South Sudan. They break away, get their own government then they go to war (laughs) why because they work for a common goal which is to separate from the islamic controlled now known as sudan cartoon they broke away from them of course the white man uh made that happen then they formed their own stuff so that was their goal. They, 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 they achieved the goal. But then after it was all said and done, and you see it time and time again, they're like, okay, well, I don't like this about you. I don't like the way you're going to do that. So it's time for war. This is why you have to be on the same page from the beginning. Because you can't have a Muslim, an Israelite, a Freemason. I mean, they're all the same. Or even homosexuals saying, okay, let's get together, let's be free. Then, after you're free, then each group says, okay, now's the opportunity. We got now we can uh, put our propaganda forth, and this is how people must be. Then you have problems. You got the same problems that you had before, after. Now, one man is out of the picture. Now you got to deal with your own and you're still at war. It's the same problems. That's why you got to try to resolve the issues from the beginning. 
and see if people agree. Because if they don't agree on a lot of things, then you know there's going to be problems down the road. There's no getting around that. Different fringe groups, different ideologies, different so-called gods, different loyalties. They will supersede race. Nationality supersedes race. You look at any nation or country back in the days that would supersede race. Nubia, Egypt. They break away. They do their own thing. Their loyalties were split by nationality. Ancient Egypt, ancient Libya. Nationality, culture. Ancient Egypt controlled by Greece versus Carthage. Different culture, different people, different loyalties. They both hated Rome, but they weren't enough to be united, especially when one is an occupier. Well, technically they both were. <laughs> so it can't work out that way. Carthage was a nationality. I mean, you know, they had different ethnicities combined as one, different languages even spoken. But they were one. Why? They were one, really, by force. <laughs> it's like, um, you know, somebody conquers. Hell, you can just look at the United States as an example. Somebody conquers. Then everybody speaking one language or, you know, one prime language. And they say, I'm an American. You know, each person comes from a different nationality or ethnicity. But they'll fall under the umbrella of American. That's why when you listen to that Michael Bloomberg's uh, political ad. He makes sure he calls people American citizens. Which is what I've been trying to argue with Coon. Because a lot of coons, they have a limited vocabulary and limited understanding of words. So that, that's why they don't understand the difference between an American and an American citizen. They get upset when they can't think about it, like a little kid. Oh, I don't know. I don't understand that. I don't like you. Let me bring your channels down. I don't like what you said. You know, but I'm not going to get into that on that point, but different nationalities, you just nationalities can work. Multicultural societies cannot work. It's just not possible. Under Rome, you had different cultures, different nationalities, different races. But they all had to bring it under the Roman umbrella. And that's the whole point. And that's the whole point is that the white man is dividing black peoples. Other, uh, and I keep forgetting about pan African. Now, I think I mentioned pan Africanism, which is the ideology intertwined in all this bullshit, which is to. Uh, is run by Caribbeans to give us it's, again to mislead us into the African bullshit, and we're still thinking about one thing, and we're forgetting about the other thing. We have foreigners coming, telling us this is what we are, this is what we should be. Each one of those people are in a Freemason outfit or in some other religion. I mean, common sense should tell you these things. You got Pan-Africans who say that the white man is a beast. And the hell with Arabs. 
But these same people, Pan-Africans, will be named Mandela, <laughs> Mandela uh, Muhammad, Mandela Amin Ra Muhammad. Well, I thought you didn't like the Arabs. I thought you didn't like Islam. Makes no sense because there's no sense to it. That's why you got to keep your eye on the main thing. Don't look left when they're hitting you right. Keep your eye on the main thing at all times. And the main thing is the white man is in control and the white man is oppressing black people. They say follow the money. It's all about the money. He has unlimited money with those banks. If it had to be gold, that's not possible. But he keeps the gold, the rubies, the gems. You get the paper money. He could devalue that shit at any time. That's why I keep telling people and people keep looking at the power of China. That's why China is going on a spending spree. Because they know that that white man, no matter what agreements they come up with behind closed doors, he can always devalue the money. That's the whole reason why he's even making them wealthy anyway. To break them down later on with the money. Devalue the dollar. You got them. Then they come begging you. Help us out. Because once you're dependent on their economy and you're working with it, they got you. The only way you can overcome an economy that somebody controls is to either make your own, which means war, or go to war. No matter what they think they're putting together, it's going to be war because that's the history of human existence. War, this person took that land, I got to take it. That's what it's all about. It hasn't changed and never will change. So with that, I'm out.